All right, thanks for that, Homer Rabara. We're here, E3's live, uh, GameSpot's live coverage of E3 2009 continues, and I'm back in the uh, host chair because I wanted to see Need for Speed shift. Jesse Abney is here. Jesse, how are you, sir? Yeah, I'm doing well, Brian, thanks. Great, so uh, Need for Speed, uh, I know the guys are firing it up there in the back, but uh, Need for Speed series has been around a long time and it's gone through a lot of different permutations, but Shift is an entirely new direction, right? Absolutely, yeah, I mean, Shift is uh, not your traditional NFS, not anything that we've really put out in the past, certainly based on a number of key factors. And one is an announcement we made last year to diversify the franchise, really pay attention to the individual subgenres, and Shift is our authentic racing experience landing squarely in the simulation subgenre. Um, as you can see in this footage here being played live, you've got a fully rendered pixel perfect cockpit view. Uh, a lot of dynamic camera work has gone into really connecting uh, the driver with the car, the player with the driver, and that car to the track in the grid. Now, I, we've seen cockpit views before. What makes Shift's cockpit view different? Well, there's a long list of visual effects that are running here. You see the jostling of the, end, uh, of the suspension over the different terrains. You see the driver for the first time in the cockpit in a need for speed. You see a lot of effects of impact, G-force modeling. Uh, really, this experience has been crafted to be functional far more than just a feature set checkbox on the back of the, the package. So, with uh, collaboration with Patrick Soderlin has really led us to craft from a driver's perspective uh, what really works about this view, how the camera's tuned to really be more functional than we've ever seen in any other racing game, and really lend to a new level of challenge. What I like about it the most is the challenge of being behind the windscreen, being in the cockpit, just like in real life racing, and actually dealing with the, the challenge of being in that position more so than in a chase cam or in a bumper cam. Yeah, and it actually brings up a good point because uh, the major I would say the majority, you correct me if I'm wrong, but the majority of people who play racing games typically play in the chase cam or the bumper cam, but it seems like you guys really are trying to draw people inside the car. It's absolutely, yeah. I mean, our efforts in game design are to immerse the player in an experience, and in this case, the experience is as a race car driver. Our driver profile is the backbone of our career. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But as a race car driver, the experience behind the wheel is what it's all about. The chase cam has been a requisite of need for speed. Uh, we've never done an interior this well modeled. So our players have gotten used to arcade racing from behind the car. Real race car drivers who play video games typically play from the bumper. But an immersive experience is being a guy who's gripping the wheel, who's actually moving the shift working the pedals, and is feeling the effect of the impact at high speeds. So because of that, someone who's, who's new to Need for Speed Shift, or even racing games in general, you want them in the cockpit, but how do you make it so it's an approachable, uh, approachable driving experience for someone who's new? Well, it really is the wow factor, you know, and it is the visuals first, and it's the experience second, and it's the action of the race at every moment in the grid. And, and it's really just that uh, innovation in this space, you know, the, the sterile simulation space really uh, innovates technically, but we try to innovate visually as well, and, and the visual wow factor of the experience that uh, we've never seen in this subgenre of racing, of being behind that wheel, of experience everything that uh, we've gained from Patrick Soderlin's time behind the uh, uh, endurance race cars really adds that kind of, this is what it looks and feels like to be a race car driver at top speed. Tell us who Patrick Soderlin is. Now Patrick Soderlin's our executive vice president of our games label in Europe. He's uh, one of the DICE co-founders and in his spare time he's a professional endurance race car driver in the GT3 class. So he has spent uh, along with Slightly Mad Studios, who's our developer here on Need for Speed Shift, about the last year and a half crafting the true driver's experience. And the true driver's experience is kind of the, the top line for all of those effects we've talked about, we've described, we've showed in the trailers of being behind the wheel of these cars, of feeling the punishment of the impacts, of feeling the G-forces with every acceleration, with all the braking, um, the camera system, and the effect system that play all that stuff up in concert to really create something that I consider a far more innovative than we've ever done in Need for Speed. I know that Slightly Mad Studios has a lot of experience in the racing genre, uh, and, and because of that, this may be the first Need for Speed game that could have potentially appealed to hardcore racing fans, I would imagine. Absolutely. I mean, Slightly Bad Studios brings a long pedigree of hardcore passion for simulation racing. And these guys are superstars in the segment. They're huge fans of the automotive sport, which Shift is rooted in professional automotive sport. 
and they know what they're doing. And they built this tech, a multi-threaded architecture from the ground up for next-gen consoles and PC. And they've delivered really one of the most compelling looking driving experiences to date. Um, all the credit to them, Patrick Soderlin, certainly in collaboration with Black Box Studios to bring not only a unique experience to the simulation racing segment, but something uh, best to breed to Need for Speed. I know there's a lot of different things to do in this game, and I know we're going to talk about career mode, but let's talk about when you fire the game up for the first time, what can you do? What, do you, what, what kind of modes are we choosing from? Well, certainly Need for Speed has always been about career structure and introducing the player to a bit of a, an experience, and we're crafting an experience that takes the player through, uh, you know, the beginnings of an automotive professional race car driver, really starting off with stock cars, um, starting off with game modes available both online as well as in quick race, but primarily as a single player career experience, starting off small, if you will, and building up a driver profile. What Need for Speed Shift is introducing this year is who you are behind the wheel. A driver persona that takes, you see here being played up in our post-race presentation, uh, analytical reports of whether you're doing precise driving or aggressive driving and what type of driver you are becoming based on those tactics you employ in the grid. And so if you employ the aggressive tactics of overtakes and drafting and, and clipping people to get in position, then your persona is becoming much more of an aggressive style driver. The game on many levels is challenging you to follow precise challenges, to earn rewards and unlocks based on those precision challenges, and to become an all-around driver ultimately in the game is the goal. But certainly uh, building upon who you are as a race car driver is something we're crafting in that experience. Building upon your vehicles, really as uh, specific to the race, the track, the types, and drift, and in competition circuit racing. Um, the game is introducing F1 and GP layouts from around the globe, as well as some fictional tracks. A long list of uh, cars, some brand new first for Need for Speed, some classic cars we've just announced online as well. Um, so really the experience of being in the automotive industry, building up your persona of being a race car driver, seeing that evolve on many different levels related to your success level, your personality in the race, uh, the badging system that we have, really a nod to our favorite first person shooter games in a player profile. It's, uh, progressing whether you're playing online in the quick race or in career it's transparent no matter which mode of gameplay you're in your driver profile is progressing so if you're only an online player a persona is being created for you based on the experiences you have online very unique career path if you will whether you're playing quick race or career it's all transparent and so it becomes a very evident way for people to see what the competition looks like what they've achieved um, and who they're playing against so two follow-ups on the career mode what do you you're earning points for finishing a race in a, driving in a particular way. A, what do I get out of that? And if I drive a crappy race, am I punished? Well, it's certainly all about fun and accessibility and need for speed. I mean, some we found looking at the simulation segment was it's often a grind. It's often a grind to have to learn the track, every break point, every corner, and compete with a perfect AI. And so there's a number of things we're bringing the career mode in the driver profile. A number of levels of rewards and unlocks that players are getting. One for learning the track, for learning the break points and achieving milestones within a race. They are earning unlocks for performance upgrades. They are earning rewards in cash. And they are allowing themselves to learn the tracks and the vehicles they're in without necessarily having to place first. So one of the things in the career mode we're introducing is that certainly at some point you will have to achieve a podium finish, but that doesn't always have to be first. It doesn't always have to be your first time out. You're still competitive, you're still learning, you're still setting sector times, earning star rewards, cash rewards, and driver profile points against your experience in that particular event. We want to keep the player in the event to the finish. We want them to finish every race, to build experience, and eventually come back and nail that podium win. All right. you want to take some questions from the audience? Yeah, absolutely. That'd be All right, awesome. let's, let's fire some up. Uh, let's see here. Well, Magnus uh, Muru from Estonia, he's asking about, um, he's basically asking are there any supercars, but I guess the wider question is, what kind of cars are in this game? Well, this game's really, I mean, we've introduced our car list just recently, and it's, it's just what's going in the box. Um, as Need for Speed Undercover has shown, we've taken a step in the direction of supporting post-launch development, continue to work out deals and announce surprises for the Need for Speed community. Uh, the cars, some of the more exciting cars I love are the Zonda F, the Zonda R. Certainly, we just announced our cover boy car is the BMW Racing GT2. 
beautiful race modified, two of a kind in the world. Uh, that's certainly a supercar elite. Um, Lamborghinis, uh, Porsches and top tier classes. Uh, so certainly a wide complement of high performance race cars, high performance supercars, and certainly some uh, pretty cool announcements coming in the weeks and months to come. More to learn, but uh, Lionel, Lionel Messi from Barcelona wants to know uh, about customization. The Need for Speed series has always been about customization, Absolutely, right? yeah, and vehicle customization is a tenant of Need for Speed, and what our fans really appreciate is taking their licensed cars and building them up. Traditionally, again, we've been uh, external customization, but now that we have these wonderful interiors, we have an authentic racing game, we're now race modifying the interiors as well, and what we're seeing in this GTR is a very stock look at Nissan's uh, killer. But as you race modify this thing, we're stripping away all the plastics, all the superfluous materials, we're lightening the load, we're increasing the performance specifications of the car, the quartering abilities, and we're, we're turning on a very modified race tuned interior as well as exterior. The visual modifications will affect things like downforce, tunable options go pretty deep. Slightly Mad Studios, again, is hugely uh, interested in having one of the most complex performance tuning systems in Need for Speed. And so what fans really love the performance tweaks, the performance tuning, uh, certainly that apply to each race, condition, and every track, are certainly a long range of options. Do you need to know thing, about things like gear ratios and things like that to get your tar car tuned up? Absolutely not. I mean, something, again, that goes towards the fun factor in Need for Speed is making sure players that just want to upgrade a car have an option, too. And so to have performance tiers, those players are going to understand performance tier one versus performance tier four, upgrade, one click, and things are done for them on a very low level. So people can get pretty deep in the system, but we've also abstracted a lot of that away to just make it simple and fun. Great. Uh, this guy's named Dieter, and he wants to know about car damage. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Pro Street introduced car damage on licensed vehicles for the first time in Need for Speed. Uh, undercover as well, and now, again, in an authentic racing design, we feel car damage, especially performance damage, which I believe is what the question relates to, is, right. is part of the game. And again, performance damage affecting top speed and wheel pull and other things that really lead to that punishment of losing control of your race car in the middle of the heat of the battle is a big part of the realism behind this type of game. And so, while we'll always have options for toning that down, scaling it back, or even turning it off, um, we, we, you know, performance damage is absolutely part of the game, as you can see here in the, the work we've done on this GTR. Visual damage is a big part of the game. Uh, it's a big part of the fun that we've brought to Need for Speed in recent years. All right, last question for me before I ask for the release date is, what can you tell us about online, uh, online racing? Well, certainly online racing is very important to us. Uh, we'll be announcing a lot of exclusive modes, brand new to ship, certainly a lot of the most popular modes. Uh, we have the ability to continually craft an online experience even after the product ships now, thanks to DLC and post-launch development plans. Um, so definitely expect more news on exactly what those are in the weeks and months to come. Right, when is Shift coming out? We must know. Shift is coming out September 22nd here in North America, and just a few days earlier, September 17th in Europe and England. All right, PC, Xbox 360, PS3? And PSP. And PSP, all right, there you go. Jesse, thanks for being yep. here. Right. There's your look at Need for Speed Shift. Right now we're going back to the Nintendo booth to check out what's going on over there.